Hello, and welcome back to the Well Fed Business Podcast. So, John, why don't you tell them what we're talking about today? We talk about the internet today now because I've been reading quite a bit of stuff and thinking about it quite deeply, as I tend to. People have said stuff about it over the years. For instance, Dan Kennedy quite rightly says the internet is not a business. It's a medium. It's a communication tool. Uh, I'm going back probably 10, 15 years when he said that when I first heard it from him. But what we've done over the intervening time is we've, the internet has insinuated itself into every part of our lives. It's ubiquitous. To the point, as Cal Newport says, and he wrote this in 2016, by the way, so that's, what, six years ago. It's so ubiquitous. If something doesn't involve the internet or revolve around it or use it in some way, it becomes invisible because it's irrelevant. So we're at a point now when people are not even saying, say, direct mail doesn't work. Now, they're not even saying that. They're not saying anything about direct mail because, as far as they're concerned, it doesn't exist. Fax. Fax is potentially still very useful. I tell you now, lawyers and people use fax all the time. I haven't got one anymore. I haven't even got email to fax because I never received But the point is, fax is still there. Fax will still work. We've got ourselves into this position where if it's not online, and if there isn't a tool or a system to do it, it's not even crap or useless or it doesn't work. It's just invisible and irrelevant. And that is dangerous. Because if you have an internet connection, I don't care how many social media channels you have, you could be an influencer on three or four different platforms of greater or lesser importance. You could have ads running, paid ads. You could be doing really well, email marketing. And you think, oh, my, my portfolio of leads and sales mechanisms and lead generation, it's diversified, right? But it isn't. Because if your internet goes down, you have nothing. You have a data pipe into your house or your office. You've only got to get some mad mick in his fucking digger cut through a data pipe and you're fucked. Or what if, and this does happen because it happened to fax marketing. What happens if, for whatever reason, governments, and and this is possible because I've talked about it before, if governments want to make more money, so they start taxing email, a penny per commercial email. Well, if you're sending 100,000 emails a week, like we do sometimes, eh, to 100,000 people, then that's 1,000 quid. All of a sudden, your ROI is much more important. It's become more like direct mail. What if the law changes like it did with facts? You're not allowed to do certain things online. You're not allowed to say certain things. You know, what Facebook say and Google do on their own private platforms to, to prevent you from saying things like click here and showing before and after shots. What if that gets written into law legislation and you're not allowed to do it anymore on the internet? Where are you then? Well, you're fucked. That's where you are. Now, this is also a position. But what we can say is right now it's damaging because... We have what, there's a thing called cognitive tunneling, and it actually brings like aeroplanes, that Air France plane that took off out of Brazil and crashed into the sea. Three pilots and also an off-duty pilot, and I think he was a trainer, they all missed the obvious that anyone could see. They, They were actually ignoring their instruments and focusing on what they thought was happening. It's called cognitive tunneling. We have a similar thing happening with the internet. People are focused online. And if it's not online, it's not real. The danger with that right now is... Everyone's got their favorite platform. Most business owners listening to this, it's probably going to be LinkedIn. LinkedIn is effectively, now get this, right? Really think about this. You too, Connor. LinkedIn is a pumpkin jar. Most people on LinkedIn, they've got opinions which are broadly constrained. The the controversial ones tend to get shouted out and cut down in silence, or they just don't bother. So the mainstream opinions on LinkedIn are pretty broadly the same as you would expect in society. That means that's a pumpkin jar because people become afraid to say anything unusual. Not necessarily because of vituperation of program, but because it's just uncomfortable saying something different. Because if if what I'm saying was true, if my different opinion is true, why is no one else saying it? Groupthink is seductive. What makes that worse is we are permanently fucking connected to it. I bet there's not a single person listening to this who doesn't do this. There'll be very few. Maybe construction guys who are actually out in the field or something. But anyone who works at a desk, what's the first thing you do when you get to work? Well, you probably don't even turn your computer on because you just leave it on now. It's just on standby. You just log out. But the first thing people do is they log in to the internet to do something. They'll check their email. Got to be checked. Why? Who says? Check social media so they don't get left behind or miss out. Say, and I've, I've done this myself, I'm just making sure that I've got no urgent messages that I'm going to miss. It's bullshit, you're lying to yourself. You just feel this urge to, to keep up to date so you're not missing out. But you're not missing out on anything anyway. 
So the moment you sit at your desk, you plug yourself into the fucking internet. Why do people have more than one tab open in their browser? You should have one tab open, the thing you're doing, if you are using a browser. If you're not using a browser, say you're writing in, in a, say a, a Word document, why have you got a browser open at all? Why is your email open at all? But we do all these things without thinking. We allow ourselves to be plugged into this fucking gigantic megabit, multi-megabit, multi-megabyte umbilical cord. And it's just perfectly normal. And it's sapping our attention. So I'm, what I'm suggesting is people have a long, hard, long, hard, moist look at their use of the internet and be fucking brutally honest with yourself. Why are you doing this? Don't tell me, oh yeah, Facebook's important because I keep in touch with my friends. How often do you do that, really? How many messages, non-superficial, trivial messages, other than a like or a quick comment, do you actually do on Facebook to keep up with your friends? Pretty shallow, superficial friendships, which are okay if that's what makes people tick. But come on, please don't tell me you, you need a Facebook account because that's an important part of your life. It feels good, but come on, be honest about it. Three things I want people to do to take a real good look at their internet use. And if they've got any brains, any sense, they want to be able to think deeper, concentrate more, focus more, and get better results in all their intellectual and academic endeavors. And let's face it, running a business is an intellectual and academic endeavor. It's not just practical. Three things you want to do. Right? The first is you need to be very judicious about what you're doing on the internet. Yeah? Doom scrolling. It's one of the most destructive things you can do to your brain, and people do it all the time. And the psychologists who work for these firms like, probably LinkedIn, but certainly places like TikTok and Instagram and Facebook, now these are probably actual rocket scientist types. They are not stupid people. They're not just programmers. Some of these people, if what we're seeing on TikTok and LinkedIn and Facebook and Instagram now is dangerous, what we know about what do you think they're planning on and working on behind the scenes? It's like Google, they're fucking really cool AI shit. I bet what they've got in their labs is even better. Probably better than the militaries because they've got more fucking money. So the first thing, be judicious about what you're doing. Yeah? Why are you doom scrolling? Why, why have you got tabs open all the time? And people post about it. Uh, my browser's always got about 20, 20 tabs open. It's really funny. <laughs> it is funny, yeah, but it's also fucking tragic. Please don't tell me you, you can multitask because you can't. All right. Science has shown us over and over again, people cannot multitask. What you end up doing is lots of things not very well. And it's, it's, it's damaging to your brain. So be judicious about what you're doing on the internet. And I don't just mean social media. I mean all of your internet use. Social media, email, browsing and stuff. It's just a fucking mind suck. That's the first thing. Second thing you need to do is, or I'd like people to do, is limit your use too. All right. Don't just have it open all the time. I'm genuinely planning, I was going to do it this morning on my, my morning walk, but I, I was then got wrapped up in thinking about this podcast. I'm going to sort out my office in a way that I might not even have internet connection in here at all. If I can do that, if I can cut off internet connection, maybe just have Wi-Fi so I can talk to a server in the house. So anything I need to send over the internet itself to you or to Holly or whatever, I do from the house. My office has no internet connection. Things that would make that difficult for me would be no music because I like to stream my music. And that's about it, really. The rest doesn't need it. What to think about that one. Okay, why can't we do this? Why not have, if you can't do that, why not have a machine on your desk or on, in a dedicated workspace that you dedicate for this deep thinking, this deep work, this focus? Why not have a machine which is purposely not connected to the internet? This machine sta is standalone. And maybe you're logging just to transfer files or use a thumb drive. How about we have a bit more focus? You could do that. If you do a lot of writing, you could buy a Chromebook, for instance, for a couple of 300 quid, and you just write on your Chromebook. And then you synchronize at the end of the day. Yeah? So be judicious about what you're doing and limit your use of it. Don't sit there after dinner on the sofa trying to watch TV and scrolling at the same time. <laughs> what are that's doing to your head? I remember, right? and I swear I'm not making this up, on the way back from the June event we did in Stansted, I sat on the plane and there was a bloke sitting across the aisle from me on my right. And he had a film up on his Microsoft Surface. And I swear he was watching the film and then scrolling on Facebook. Watching the film, scrolling on Facebook. It's just beggar's belief. Spotify recently did uh, the whole Spotify rap thing where they give people a summary of what they've listened to for the year. And they also tell you how many minutes of music you've listened to. And there were several people where it was like 100,000 minutes, which essentially meant there's not a moment in their waking life where there's silence because they cannot just sit there with their own thoughts 
Cal Newport talked about embracing boredom. And I, when I first saw the, the chapter of the, ti the title of the chapter, I, I was a bit confused. But I read it and he's absolutely right. I bet everybody's done this. If you've ever been into a supermarket and you're in a queue and there's probably two or three people ahead of you, what do you do? Get your phone out. Social media, maybe the news, possibly WhatsApp. That's, I mean, I don't do social media on my phone, rarely look at the news. So for me, it would be WhatsApp. But it's still me being connected to someone else is distracting my brain from being with itself. Don't, not, not anymore. The only thing, the only exception I'll make is music, if my music needs changing or something. Because I like music. I'll put it on in the supermarkets because I can't stand the fucking noise. But that's what people do. Phone. Traffic lights. People can't even sit at a traffic light for probably less than a minute, like getting their phone and just checking their messages to see if someone's sent them a message. And then the light changes, they're fucking scrambling to put the phone down. Why are you doing that to yourself? No one is that fucking important. The President of the United States is not that fucking important. You know? Nothing can't wait. And so that's the first thing, judiciousness and limit. And then plan, right? There's nothing wrong per se with even doom scrolling. In the same way, there's nothing wrong intrinsically with fast food or alcohol. The problems start when that's all that you subsist on those things. You know? if, so if you are constant, if you're drinking every single day, all day, or you're eating nothing but fast food all day, you will get health problems. And in the same way as if you are constantly doom scrolling, and I don't mean all the time, but if every moment you're bored, so every time there's a break in work or your life or you're stuck at traffic lights or you're in a queue in the supermarket, you start doom scrolling. That's like a little drip feed and it's not good for you. So plan it. So maybe have a block of, okay, we're working, I'm, I work in blocks of 90 minutes. So I work hard for 90 minutes with no distractions sometimes not even music. And then I'll take an hour to 90 minutes off. It's like a fucking mega Pomodoro technique. And the hour and a half I take off, I will typically go for a walk down the lane. I shall go and do my workout, maybe just read a book, have a nap in my granddad chair. But what you could do, if I was still connected to those social media, I could go on social media. I could do a scroll for 90 minutes, but then I would stop dead. No harm done. Because what I'm not doing is constantly trying to do 20 things at once, pretending I'm working when I'm not. And uh, now people will say, well, I can't do that because if I'm writing a blog post or if I'm, say, writing something for a client, I need to keep doing research. Well, in which case, when you're typing away and you think, I need to check, fact check something or I need something explained better so I can put it across in my own words, make a note. So next time you do have an internet session for an hour, you then go and find the answer and put it into what you're doing. You don't need to do it right now. You just don't. Anyway, that's about it for today, I think. Yeah, if you want the book, it's the way into our world at the moment. The new one coming out in a couple of weeks. Um, but right now, it's The Well-Fed Freelancer. The lessons I teach you in there are applicable to virtually every single business out there. Ones it might not be applicable to are things like, I don't know, your high street retail and stuff. But most people, anyone in a, in a service industry, and by service industry, I would include construction workers because you are doing something of value for someone. You're not just selling a thing off a shelf. They will work for you. So don't let the word freelancer put you off. That's the place to start, wellfedfreelancer.com. And if you don't like it, you get double your money back and a free pizza. What more can we say? Oh, you get 10 or nine or 10 fucking priceless bonuses too. It's a no-brainer. And on that note, stay safe. See you later. Ta-ta.